Sup homies? Random Access Memories by Daft Punk is now officially 10 years old. To think that an album so masterfully crafted was only made in 2013, this was a time where the EDM genre was kind of in a weird state. The music wasn't exactly something you'd call, uh, good. But there was a ton of breakout hits from artists who were really on the rise at the time. Meanwhile, a French electronic music duo, Thomas Bangalter and Guy Manuel de Homem Cristo, were about to change the world of music as we know it. Their last album up until this point was seen as kinda underwhelming to most of the fans, and despite an amazing live show and performance a couple of years later, they realized that they couldn't keep this party going forever, and instead decided to create one last perfect and fitting end to their style, and to let the world carry on with the impact that they've left. As I've said in the past, Random Access Memories by Daft Punk is legitimately a goddamn masterpiece of a record. I didn't grow up with this album, I actually grew up with Discovery, but I didn't give it a full listen until I heard about their departure. In my opinion, it's not only the best album that they've ever made, but it's also the greatest album to ever be released under the EDM genre. Yeah, out of all these albums, I like this one the most. A concept album of robots reflecting on the memories of their past, making music together, understanding emotions, and of course, having a good time along the way. Today, I'm going to be explaining why an album like Random Access Memories is so amazing. This is how Daft Punk gave life back to music. To start off, I'm going to try and keep things lighthearted because this album means a lot to me emotionally, and I don't want to make anyone uncomfortable. They're just two robots and I'm getting hyper already. I also hate trying to fill time, so I'll be moving through some of these songs pretty fast, and I'm sorry if I didn't exactly spend enough time talking about one song over another. I could write a freaking novel about how fantastic Giorgio by Moroder is. Instead, I think small segments is good enough for each of them. And with that being said, let's go beyond. The first track on this album is Give Life Back to Music, which sort of cues us in to this concept that Daft Punk wants to show, with light motifs snuck in like the takeoff sound for Contact later on. But this song is here to explain that in the eyes of Daft Punk, or the robots they're portraying, the idea the idea of music itself is something that is no longer full of life and isn't about freedom of expression. It's no longer what we once thought it was, and I'd like to imagine that with this song they've kind of opened the gates and let a world of creativity escape and run rampant. The funky guitars and the pounding drums just let the world burst with color and emotion. It's a pretty beautiful sentiment too. If you listen closely about halfway through the song, you can sort of make out this audio of children playing in a park or something. And this could be representative of one of the robot's past memories from when they were young and carefree. Next song completely changes tones with The Game of Love. This song could also go with the theme of childhood and young adulthood. Ideas of growing up and learning about maturity and the concept of love being a difficult feeling for many. When most people think of robots in general, emotions aren't usually associated because they're just programs. They don't have free will unless told so. Daft Punk combines these two ideas in a heartbreaking song that sort of talks about a loss of love for someone in particular. Someone who wants to keep this person in their life, yet understands that they decided to walk away and leave them behind. The vocoder really hides the pain in Thomas's voice, and it makes the lyrics even more saddening to think about because there's people who feel feel these feelings every single day. The next song is a bit of a different take for the album because it may be the only song on the entire album to break this concept that we've seen so far. Giorgio by Marauder is one of the best damn songs I've ever heard. It's a nine minute long tribute to one of the founders of electronic dance music. That being Giorgio Marauder, who's most famous for the album From Here to Eternity and various soundtracks. My name is Giovanni Giorgio but you can call me Giorgio. It's sort of a narration of his life and explains how desperately he wanted to become a musician, so much so to the point where he would practically live at the places he worked as a discotheque for. The actual Giorgio Moroder had no idea what Daft Punk was planning on this track, despite being involved directly. He basically just walked into the studio and was told to explain his life as a musician and then proceeded to not know anything about the song until it released. It's incredible. I mean, like, truly incredible. This one quote in particular really sticks out to me as I recite it to myself a lot. Once you free your mind about a concept of harmony and of music, being correct. You can do whatever you want, so nobody told me what to do. Afterwards, we've come to my favorite song on the entire album. Within. This is the song that also goes with that theme of growing up I mentioned earlier, and it's probably the best portrayal of that. Within starts off with one of the most beautiful entrances to a song I've ever heard, and the lyrics talk about hiding yourself for so long and feeling as though you're lost and don't know who you are, as if you once had goals and aspiring ambitions that you wanted to achieve, but instead were forced to hide away and shield yourself from it. It makes you wonder how they must have felt in this position if there was a sadness plaguing their heart, keeping them from being themselves out of fear of someone else or the consequences that would follow. The gentle and ambient piano and the child that slowly move from ear to ear on this song give me chills even years later and that's not even close to how greatly this song ties into the next song it's, it's, it's crush. crush Julian Casablanca's lead singer of the Strokes who are also one of the greatest bands of all time and the Voids who are sort of one of the greatest bands of sings the vocals to this track and honestly it's really overlooked Julian's pouring his freaking heart out over this song and apparently he was making up about half of the words this is a song that could portray another distant memory believed to be of a troubled relationship and a struggle to move on the groove on this song during the chorus and the vocals Julian 
Ian, you gotta be stopped! You're too cool, man! It's kinda insane just how this song is able to keep two clashing tones consistent. It's able to show both intense heartbreak and such beautiful honesty. This song is actually my ringtone, believe it or not, but that's unrelated. Instant Crush is a highlight on this album for me. I don't think I'm ever gonna stop listening. Afterwards, there's the song Lose Yourself to Dance, performed by Pharrell Williams, who's had a thriving musical career since this album released. Hi, kid. Believe it or not, I actually kinda enjoy this song because it still fits with that theme I mentioned earlier. Daft Punk were discotheques. They know the dance floor better than anyone else, so if you think about it, this song kind of keeps with that idea of being carefree, and also feeling emotions that you don't really feel every day. It's not really a song I can praise for hours unlike the rest, but I still think it's a great song and worthy of respect. Then we arrive at the song Touch. Oh. My. God. A song for the ages. Touch is unbelievable, the slow and unsettling start that eventually builds into Paul Williams singing a poem explaining their memories of sense and feeling. This album speaks to all five senses, but this is a song that you can almost feel yourself because of how lifelike and, no pun intended, alive it can feel. The sudden cutoff when the chorus of children stops singing and Williams ending the song on a diminished chord? Oh my god. Everything about Touch is just perfect, though it is a song that might scare the uh, people who you're listening to it with. It's definitely a song you can't skip if you're listening all the way through like I usually do. Afterwards is the massive hit single on the album, Get Lucky, which might have annoyed a lot of you since radio stations just defaulted to playing this song whenever they had no idea what else to do. <laughs> Some things never change, huh? That must be why they're doing so successful. Radio station rants aside, I actually think Get Lucky is a great song, despite its less than favorable reputation it's gotten. It could go with the concept of living the best years of your life and making the most out of any night you have. Even when I was a kid, I imagined this song would have taken place in a casino. It just kind of has that vibe. Plus, it's still a great meme that fits with any situation. I'd play clips, but I'm a bit too afraid of getting DMCA'd, so we're just gonna move on. Wait, Pharrell, why did you sing two songs on this album? Why not Julie? Beyond is another track that has such a distinct tone that I can't really make out, but it always does sound sincere. This is another one where I've listened a handful of times and just became lost in its world and style. But I'm gonna be honest here, it probably has the best lyrics on the entire record. You are the night, you are the ocean. You are the light behind the cloud. My heart is melting! Then we have Motherboard, a track that I always imagined as a walk through an enchanted forest with large and open areas, damp vines, and rickety bridges. The gentle flutes sound as if there's maybe fairies floating above your heads, and it's just, oh god, I love it. It's one of the only two songs on the album that's an instrumental from beginning to end, and they really sell the atmosphere on this one. It was always a favorite of mine. And the ending sounded as if you took a misstep and fell into a river, and the scene was played back for you in slow motion to get an idea of the impact. Probably the most technically impressive song on the album, it must have been so fun to produce. Afterwards comes another highlight of mine on the record, Fragments of Time, featuring Todd Edwards. Alright, who said they didn't like this song? The general opinion is that most people just aren't a fan of Fragments of Time, and I am not part of it. Just the idea of them releasing a recording session that shows their progress of writing with Todd Edwards was so cool, and it continues with the theme of memories as it finds ways to showcase the blur between understanding human nature while still living as a robot. It may have also been inspired by Todd Edwards' time he spent in California when he was meeting up with Thomas, and I think that's pretty cool. And then there's Doing It Right Right, everybody will be dancing and we're feeling it wrong. One of the catchiest songs I've ever heard, always stuck in my head at the most inconvenient of time. The ticking and the keys on this track sound a bit strange. Not in a bad way, but in a way that makes me think of a song to play after this party. Sort of like an epilogue or an outro. Or maybe something more along the lines of Face to Face from Discovery. But it also might be designed that way knowing what would come next. So, we've reached the end. There's nowhere to go but up, I suppose. The final song on Random Access Memories is Contact, and it is not only one of the best possible ways you could end an album like this, but it's probably the best way that Daft Punk could have gone out. The beginning of this song starts out with these dark and sinister chords that become more and more stretched out as the song goes on. Everything is soaring as high as it possibly can, altitude and speed are reaching numbers we've never seen before. It's almost as if you can reach out your hand and touch the starry night sky, until eventually, you hit the ground, without knowing whether or not we've made it, all we have is the memories of our journey, randomly accessed through a hard drive that's been left behind. And that, my friends, is Random Access Memories. Daft Punk didn't only shatter the heavens with this album. They broke through and completely changed the stars around. So how did they follow this up? They decided to tell us that they were breaking up eight years later. Daft Punk's announcement on February 2nd, 2021 came as a complete shock to the entire music world. These guys practically own the genre, but I can understand why it was their decision to move on. They had general disagreements and a loss of enjoyment for EDM music as a whole, and I'd say it was a good way to break things off. Hell, I'm pretty sure Thomas Bangalter composed a 
the ballet, so it's good to hear that they're still good friends. Also, a few years after they released Ram, they started collaborating with up-and-coming artists at the time, like The Weeknd, who nowadays is kind of carrying the torch that Daft Punk lit. The Weeknd released the album Dawn FM on January 7th, 2022, and I really, really like it. Because it's not like Daft Punk was the ones telling him what to do. It's because The Weeknd developed a connection with these two robots and not only redefined his sound as a result, but also became one of the largest and most successful artists out there, despite apparently starting from nothing. That's something I find to be especially fascinating about Daft Punk. They have essentially won. A good majority of artists have some form of controversy surrounding their careers, and a lot of them think that they have to do something to get the press talking about them. For better, or for worse. Or they get carried away with the pleasures of being rich and famous, and instead forget from whence they came. Daft Punk did none of this. They simply did what they loved, and loved what they did. And that's why I think Daft Punk gave life back to music. Thank you guys for tagging along until the end. If you enjoy my absurd and childish rants over albums that I love dearly, why not leave a like? You don't have to, but it's much appreciated. And that's about all I have for today. I'll catch you guys later. Take care.